Willow Creek Springs presents Healthy Living with your host, Joe Grumbine. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Joe with the Healthy Living Podcast. And uh, this is, if you are new to this recording, this is a podcast that's all about healthy living and uh, techniques and and participants, practitioners, modalities. Uh, you know, we all live, we're born, we live and we die. But what happens in between those three things, we have a lot of control over, I believe. And um, health is a very important variable that affects every single one of us in every single way. And we all are somewhere in the middle of the dial because nobody's perfect and nobody's dead. <laughs> and so my goal is to have conversations that bring us moving the needle towards being healthy rather than being dead. And uh, today we've got Tom Palladino with us and he has got um, a new technology that he's working with. And um, he's working with a concept called scalar light. And this is something that I've heard of a bit. Um, I've been an aficionado a student, if you will, of Nikola Tesla since I was a little kid and 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 learned about the wonders and amazing uh, uh, discoveries this guy did. And then you learn about the his whole life story. It's kind of sad when it all plays out. And so much of his technology is just still sitting in a box somewhere. Nobody really knows what to do with it. Um, Tom, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you. Uh, you've published a, a book recently, and you've been working with Scalar Light. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what this is all about? What is Scalar Light? Thank you for the invite. Joe. We're going to speak about Scalar Light. It's the light of the sun, the stars. It's the primal energy of the universe. This is not electricity. And why is that important? Because we're working at the causal level. I'm not working at the chemical level, I'm working at the level of light, or if you will, it's a first cause. Now, working with this energy, scalar energy, the energy of the light, the stars, I can access a person's informational field. All of my work is information by a way of light. It's not a chemical process, and I'll get into that. So let's, let's stop for a second. We have an audience that is way, a huge spectrum of people from people that are mentally challenged all the way to physicians and, and, you know, PhDs. Um, and so I like to break things down to a very simple sort of uh, an effective model of language. But at the same time, I have no problem going as deep as we want. When we think about electricity, we think of things that are particles, electrons and protons, and right. these little hard to imagine, but these little teeny little specks that carry energy with them and they go and they have charges that are positive or negative and, and, and they operate in a way that we can predict. But there's also all kinds of different energies. And, you know, I've, I've spoken with Reiki practitioners and I've, I've, I've worked with all types of modalities that talk about and 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 work with energies you know and you talk about the sun and the stars and the way i understand it the sun is this nuclear fusion plant that takes hydrogen and and helium and fuses it into this you know immense amount of power and electricity and x-rays and photons and all these things are spewing out of it traveling in all directions and a lot of them hit us here on the earth and we harness some of it. Is that what you're talking about? No, it's, it's different, but that's a good point. This spectrum of energy is non-physical. So this is the energy well before the electromagnetic spectrum. This is the energy before we have electricity or magnetism. So scalar energy is the initial energy, and it will, if you will, degrade or convert into electromagnetic energy. Mm. This is what Tesla saw. He called it radiant energy. And he believed that this was the kinetic energy of the stars. In other words, later in his life, Tesla was not looking to, to create a power plant. To the contrary, Tesla was tapping the power plant of the universe, the stars. So Tesla had a transition in his life from electromagnetic energy, where he, he would have to create the motor, to radiant energy or scalar energy, in which he would tap the energy from the stars. 
there's a big difference, gigantic difference. This is what I propose. Why not use the energy of the stars? Why even build a power plant? You have all the power plants you want in the stars. That's where the initial energy comes from. Well, that's interesting. So um, when you're talking about kinetic energy, that's like the energy that holds things where they are, right? Yes, that's, yes exactly. It's, it's the unseen force. It's almost like the dark matter that we don't really know what the hell it is, but right. we know it's there and we know it does stuff. But right. is, is that kind of where yeah. we might be looking at? I mean, exactly, exactly, exactly. Now, to be clear, this is a new branch of physics. This is Tesla physics. Tesla had two careers. His, his career began with EC electricity. Later in his life, he was not working with electricity. He was working with what he called radiant energy, which was wireless transmission of energy. Well, that's what I have with my instruments. It's a wireless transmission of energy. It's not electricity. So those so are the me, big towers he was building. That yes, was all about this. Yes. And I have two Tesla coils in, in my laboratory that nice. I Nice. So I, I can't afford the scale that Tesla was using, but I do have two Tesla coils in my laboratory. And nice. The instrument is so strong, I can duplicate one of Tesla's experiment, which I can illuminate a light bulb in my hand. Whoa. <laughs> and for those of you listening on the audio, I will be putting this one up on the YouTube so you can see it. But he literally took an unplugged light bulb, moved it within, what, six inches or so of this device? And it lit up. I'm watching it lit up right now. <laughs> so this is and the, the closer you get it lights up brighter. So it seems yes. to have a diminished return being away from it. Yes, thank you. So this is the free energy that Tesla spoke about. Now, obviously that was a wireless transmission of energy. Now, if I can do that with a light bulb, then I can do that with a person's aura or their force field. Now to be clear to your audience, what I'm about to describe is not a biochemical process. When I work with this instrument, again, this is non-physical energy. I work with photographs of people. Whoa. I'll hold up my photograph as an example. My photograph has radiant energy or scalar energy attached to it. I access a person's energy field through their photograph. I, to start with this analogy, Joe and I are having a conversation through our computers. Okay? We can, I can see Joe's image, he can see my image. Obviously, Joe is not in my computer. When people email me their photograph, I work with their image, their photograph because the image has their energy signature attached to it. So, so you kids were right. Yes. You are stealing a little bit of their soul. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And you know, they knew that intuitively. A photograph of a person captures a person's essence. A person's energy or a, call it what you will, the force field is on that photograph. So I never work with people in the flesh biologically. This is not a biochemical reaction. I work with their aura or their force field. And it's very real. Wow. Wow. I'm, I, I'm e intrigued and excited. You know, one of the things that, that's difficult with a lot of healing arts and modalities and things is to be able to prove something. And, you know, there's so many variables involved. I work with natural essences. And, and you know, when you have a combination of 20 ingredients and you try to prove what's doing what, it's really difficult. But you can observe anecdotally but in this case you have a single action and yes. it seems like you'll be able to quantify this i would say without without question at one point if you can get enough data points exactly enough data points so right now we're still anecdotal before how do people feel half the people send me the photograph how do they feel those are the endpoints that's the data that we're looking at right now and I have very good results, to be quite frank. Uh, after a month or so of sessions, people say they feel great. They feel different. Can we explain that by Newtonian science, by Western medicine? No, it's not Newtonian science. It's not Western medicine. So when you're talking about making changes to people now, I mean, I've, I'll, I'll give you this. I've cheated a little bit and I've been on your website and I've listened to some of your interviews. So I, I know some of the answers to this, but Tell me about the the range of problems that can be affected by this. Well, again, energy is, is fundamental. So I can work with the, the spirit, the mind, the body, and have a favorable outcome on, on all of those levels. 
So essentially, this is going to be, if you will, the answer for many disease signatures, thousands of disease signatures. Why? All disease begins as intelligence. Everything starts as intelligence information. And if scalar energy can correct that disease pattern, can correct that disease signature, then we're negating the signature of disease. That's very important. Now, I have established this. I think I, I have good proof that I can establish this for microbes. A microbe has a disease signature, and I can eliminate or negate the disease signature of a microbe. Now, this actually, from a fundamental point, I know not a technical point, reminds me of the work that Royal Rife did. And uh, he worked with uh, frequencies and he created this machine that that you can tune a frequency to the desired tone and it can negate as much as what you're talking about, only it's plugged into AC current and it creates yes. this, transmits this electricity. Is, is it a similar yes. concept? That's a great, that's a great analogy with, with, I think, two exceptions. I believe Wright is using an electromagnetic instrument. I am not. Using right. a scalar instrument. And Rife had you work with people in person. In the scalar realm, you only work with a photograph which represents a person. So in other words, quite frankly, people can teleport or bilocate to my laboratory because it's their energy field that I'm working with. Their bilocated energy field, not their biological field, their bilocated energy field. So you're, when you're really talking, I mean, you know, the concept of this was quantum. And, and when we're talking about the quantum world, we're literally talking about this molecular, sub-molecular world yes. where everything's happening and we don't see it. Yes. And, and, you know, this idea of quantum entanglement, everything's connected and yes. that, that sort of validates this concept of you don't have to be there to be there. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. My photograph is quantum entangled to me. How? Well, you'd have to take a, a course in scalar physics to understand that. You cannot explain this by way of Newtonian science. It's not. But my photograph carries my signature. It's quantum entangled with my energy field. If I have an energy field as a person, that energy field is now placed on the photograph. That's fascinating to me. That's quantum entanglement of energy fields. So when you're dealing in the quantum world, and we're also living in this linear world that we can experience or we you know we we have these senses that give us information but there's a whole lot more information going on than we're sensing and so we live in this world where we recognize things like time and and whether it's real or not it depends on who you are and where you're sitting but for you and i it it it's relatively real or you and I wouldn't be having this conversation because we had to synchronize our time to agree that this was a place we were going to meet and this is where we were going to do it. Yeah. And if, if we didn't do that, we would be doing something else. Right. Um, and, and when you're talking about photographs, I mean, like theoretically I could send you a baby picture of myself. Now that baby picture is that same imprint of my spirit, my soul, yes. where it was, 58 years ago, yes, um, I was a little different then. Um, what would that do for you? That, that's a good point. It doesn't matter because your energy feels like your fingerprint. Your fingerprint stays with you for life. Your genetic code stays with you for life. People have sent me photographs that are 20, 30, 40 years of age, old, excuse me, old. And the photograph still reports in the present moment. That's a very good point. So scalar energy is not subject to time. That's true quantum physics. We're not having to address time. We transcend time and space. Wow, that's pretty powerful. So, um, you know, when we're trying to prove something, we have what we have. We have what we expect. We do what we do. We observe what we observe. And then that result tells us, did we accomplish what we set out to or not? Well, all those things generally require time, right? Because you have before, during, and after, and, and that sequence of events is what tells us, did we do anything or not that create this recordable, learnable moment? And you take time out of it, and it all of a sudden doesn't matter if it was before or after the accident, or before or after the event, or 
And I, I, of course, my little pea brain struggles with that because I don't, you know, know how to live in a world that doesn't have time. How, how does that all work out? Yeah, that's a good point. So in a scalar energy environment, if you have quantum entanglement, then you have quantum entanglement of time. Consider this. If everything is quantum entangled, then you only have one point, you only have one moment in time. Now, for instance, in the United States, we have four time zones. But what if those four time zones were quantum entangled? Then there'd be only one time zone, right? Right. Okay. So that's quantum entanglement of time. Why can't my photograph be quantum entangled to my energy field? It is. If everything is quantum entangled, sir, then the entire universe is one moment in time. There are no time zones. It makes sense on that level. I, I guess you have to suspend some beliefs in order to accept this thing that you it that's different from what you have experienced but it makes enough sense there's not a there's not a fundamental flaw in it like the cartoons with three fingers you go well i don't generally see three-fingered people so if i see a three-fingered person who's probably a cartoon i'm probably dreaming <laughs> but when it comes to time you know and 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 you start getting into this quantum world where we know so little and we don't know so much it's pretty easy to say well this makes sense you know i come from a place that says the universe is infinite so therefore if it could happen it probably does happen i can pretty much accept anything being possible so that makes my life easy um you know when it comes down to things that we're not familiar with but you know a lot of folks have have issues with with that what got you before we get into the technology here and all of this, what got you like, I, I'm a nutty guy who was always interested in exploring when I was four or five years old, I was taking things apart and trying to figure out what made them tick. How'd you, what took you from wherever you came from to this? Thank you. At a young age, I studied Nikola Tesla and I understood what Tesla was doing. I was reading his books. This is 50 years ago. Yeah. And I said to myself, this technology is incredible. This technology will change the world. So I followed it up. I've been so at you this now in for 50 years. From Tesla himself. That's awesome. I, I can remember, I was probably about 10 or 11 when I came upon something he did. And I was like, I mean, I can go back to that bookmark and go, that was one of those moments that said, hey, this guy, pay attention to him. <laughs> so that that that's pretty interesting. So, so you've You've studied his work. You've looked at, you know, his drawings, his, uh, uh, the, the guy was so incredible. I mean, he would think about something and then just write it all down. Like everything yes. just happened. He, yes. Now that was, that's quantum entanglement of, of, right. of God's mind. What am I getting at? He had flashes of light. He said right. throughout his life, he is actually, you could see flashes of light coming into his mind. And he said, within those flashes of light, he could see an invention. And without going to the laboratory and experimenting, or without going to a workbench and putting something on paper, he had those flashes of light gave him the schematics for an invention. Exactly. You can call that a divine download. You can call that an afflatish. You can call that fused knowledge. Tess enjoyed all of those. Yeah, when I heard about that, I was like, I got to learn more. And that was that was definitely... Uh, one of the, you know, as a formulator, I get ideas all the time. And, and you know, sometimes I write them down. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I, I let them boil, you know. And then sometimes you wake up at three o'clock in, in the morning. And you're like, ha, ah, I got it. And then you're like, where yeah. the hell did that come from? Like, yes. what does it happen when it, at the most inconvenient time when I don't right. have any? <laughs> no. Purportedly, Tessa has 300 inventions to this name, maybe more. Right. How is it that one man, one researcher, can invent 300 instruments, inventions, devices, call them what you will. That that boggles the mind. Right. Yeah, yeah, just absolutely. It, well, the, the part that really gets, we'll jump around a little bit because this is a, a, a an actual concern. And, and I know it's been brought up before, but, you know, Tesla was ahead of his time. He, If he was alive today, he'd be ahead of his time. But yes. The point is, is the powers that be don't always appreciate those things as the powers that be are are influenced, if you will, by existing technologies, if you will. 
And um, there's been so many countless stories of people that came up with this uh, great idea. Then all of a sudden, some strangers knocked on the door and poof, I don't know what happened. And, you know, I can remember a long time ago, my grandfather created a design for a carburetor that would uh, get up to 200 miles a gallon. It it, it took gasoline and, and it used the idea of a, like a... Um, an old Coleman lantern and it, it it pressurized and vaporized it in a in a unique way. And then all of a sudden something happened and the government came along and he didn't talk about it anymore. And I was like, wow, you know, and, and, and he was a self-made guy. And I remember when he told me that there was something happened that he wasn't going to tell us. And I was like, geez, that's that's not cool. And I was a little kid at the time. So what are your thoughts about that? If this thing gets yeah. too... You're right. There, there are powerful people who love money and power, and in so doing, free energy is a, is a threat to them. Tesla energy, Tesla technology is a threat. Now, not only am, am I able to use this, this energy to light up a light, eventually light up a city, but presently right now, I can send healing to a force field by way of a photograph, whether it's one person or a thousand people. So whether I work with a photograph of one person, a photograph of a thousand or a million people, this is quantum healing for the energetic field, for the force field of people. So this introduces a new way of power generation, new way of quantum health, a new way of transportation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The, the new way is going to replace the military industrial complex. Well, that sounds pretty uh, pretty powerful. I would want to have a lot of people watching. <laughs> and that's a part of why we're here. So, you know, you're talking about this this range of healing and, and mind, body, spirit. It can kind of do anything. Um, if you had this thing, I mean, I'm looking at this device that you have behind you, and it's about, it looks like it's about two or three feet by maybe a foot and a half to two feet by maybe a foot or two. Um, is that all you need or do you need something that's more advanced or, I mean, is this, is this a, a, a working prototype or do you feel like you, you've reached the, the, the pinnacle this is, here? This is the working prototype when working with photographs. Why? You don't need much energy for a photograph for a person's uh, force field or a force field of an animal. Now, for a city, uh, in order to illuminate a city, I need to increase this output by 10,000 foot, 100,000 foot. And I have, I have an idea how, how I'm going to do that with God's help. But my point is today, immediately, I can work with 1,000. I could work with a million people a day by way of their photograph and improve their energetic health, soul, mind, and body. How, why? Why would I make such a statement? Because the energy itself is healing. I don't heal. The energy itself interfaces with a person's force field and improves their spirit, their mind, and their body. I can prove that by, by the testimonies on my website. We have incredible testimonies from people around the world. So in, in, on your website, you were talking about a group of people that um, were AIDS- sufferers and uh, you had gone in and and uh done treatments with for for these folks so why don't you tell us a little bit about that experience yeah. there's a hiv clinic in delhi india om prakash hiv aids clinic this is a photograph from the clinic in delhi india everybody in this photograph at one time was hiv positive and how do i go about identifying the hiv virus I actually take a magnified photograph of HIV and place it in the instrument side by side the people. So the two energy fields, the quantum fields communicate. So the energy of HIV virus is identified in the quantum field of the people, all energetic, and then we negate the energy field of HIV. So a photograph of HIV identifies the quantum field of HIV communicates that and then inside that quantum field of the people we can negate the virus now after i work with people under this type of arrangement people will have a follow-up pcr test many of them say that they no longer have a viral load for hiv so i've got a 
a big challenge for you. And I, and I mean this from a, I want to see this thing work. And I have a dog in the fight. Um, and I've worked with people with ailments of all kinds. And I, I work with whatever tools are at my fingertips. And I work with plant medicine, energy medicine, cannabis medicine, all kinds of different things. And we have all different types of varying successes. But what I do know is that there's been many times when people were told by their physicians, by, by Western medicine, that this is what's happening and this is what has to be done. And if you don't do this, then that'll happen. And I've watched over and over and over again as proving these doctors wrong, um, in accomplishing things that couldn't be accomplished. So I certainly believe that this could happen and could work. Um, I have a situation personally where I've got a friggin' lump on my neck and it's a big old lump. And I went to the doctor and he said, well, we think it's a, it's, we don't think it's cancer. We think it's a, a salivary gland that ran amok. And so what happened over time, my genetic code got a little corrupted and, and, and my body was making cells that didn't belong. I, you can see this thing. It's this big old thing. I'm wondering, what do you think you can do for it? Recently, the energy is strong okay, and the energy is direct. I'm going to explain. I'm going to answer your question. I think I can help. This is why. Let me explain. That's a scalar wave. Look at that. That's a double helix scalar wave. So that's the perfect energy, the perfect intelligence of scalar energy. Now, this is another scalar wave, which is DNA. Now, for your audience that cannot see this, I'm holding up a photograph of double helix, a, a, a coil, if you will, a double helix coil of scalar energy that's identical in ratio and proportion to our DNA. Now, my predecessor, a man by the name of Priori, proved that a scalar wave could correct DNA, including correct and cure cancer. Priori is his name, Antoine Priori. I would suggest your audience look into that. Now, yes, if, I, if I can duplicate the results of Priori, then I'll let you know. I'm trying to do so. So I'll work with you, Joe, and let's see sure. if you have any improvement. Absolutely. Again, DNA is a standing scalar wave. What creates DNA? Scalar energy, Tesla energy. What maintains DNA? Scalar energy. So if we can impart, if you will, the intelligence, the information on a DNA code, then we can correct DNA. Now, what does that mean? Uh, in layman's term, that means we should have success with tumors and cancer. We'll see. I'm not promising Absolutely. that. We'll see. Well, and, and that's really all I would hope for. You know, yeah. frankly, you know, you go to a doctor and they say, well, we want to take a chunk out. We want to cut you. And I'm like, well, as far as I'm concerned, that would be a last option. If I've tried everything else and nothing else worked enough, I might put that in your hands. But trust me, I'm going to try everything I can think of first. Um, so... When it comes to this treatment, you know, you're not selling uh, equipment. You're not, you know, like a lot of times I've worked with a lot of, uh, I've had guests on that have different devices and, and, and they offer different tools and, and uh, instruments and devices and all kinds of things. But that's not what you're offering at all. You're offering a treatment. And I saw on the website that you have this offer that's going on, you know, uh, you'll work with somebody for, I think it's 15 days for free. And then how does it work after that? Or, or you know, how, how does it work to work with you? Okay. So I want everybody to get their feet wet, so to speak. So on my website, you're right. Anybody can email us a photograph. We'll treat you for free, your photograph and your family if you want. 15 days for free. Then you decide if this is of merit. Now, thereafter, people can sign up for a monthly program. We have a monthly program for inexpensive is $89 a month. Got That's it. a special program. But I leave it up to the people. First of all, I want to give everybody in the world a free session. I want everybody in the world to at least experience this. Then only if people are convinced do I want them to move on, become a paying member. Perfect. I agree with that principle. That's that's how I've operated my whole life. Here, try it. If you like it, come back and I'll make it available to you. And if you yeah. don't, well, maybe it's not for you. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, thank you for being honorable. And, and that way, the decision is that of the person. There's no coercion, nobody's pushing, nobody's forcing. Everything is adjudicated by the individual and how they feel and, and if they feel comfortable with this process. 
Well, I think that um, I'm I'm very interested in learning more about this. I mean, you know, this is the kind of stuff that's sitting right in front of our nose. That was the thing that Tesla was so um, just brilliant about is he he realized way back when he was walking the earth that there was so much more happening than we were noticing and seeing. And 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 he was blessed to have these these inspirations and the, this in this these deliveries of, of of information that he shared with us. Light is infinite. Light energy is infinite. If all of the stars in the universe are broadcasting scalar light, well, that that shows you just how broad of a spectrum this is. The trillions of stars are always, if you will illuminating us with scalar light so right. that must be important all of that energy all of that information energy is information is intelligence the light of the stars is information yes it's light but it's intelligence so we're receiving information from the stars all the time we just don't quite understand how fast of an information pool it's an infinite information pool the stars govern the universe and we have to go back to that first principle as Tessa did. And Tessa said to, to many people, he wanted to harness the sun. He meant that literally. How do you do that? It's the scalar energy of the sun that you harness. So what was Tessa doing later in his life? He had miniature suns. He had miniature stars. Right. This, this instrument behind me is a miniature star. <laughs> I love it. Once again, he took a, a light bulb that was wrapped up in a bag and just swung it up near this thing and it lit right up. And it was not even the same light bulb. So, well, listen, Tom, I am tickled to touch into this world. And this is a world that fascinates me. Um, I, I, as we spoke a little bit before, I, I would love to, uh, uh, you know, make your service available to our listeners, I will contact you. Um, I'll send you a picture, and 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 I would love to see this for myself. And frankly, you know, that's what this show is all about. You know, it's just because somebody says something doesn't mean it is. Just because somebody doesn't say something doesn't mean it isn't. Um, let's find out. Let's do this. Let's try it. Let's work it. Let's work together. Um, people that are innovators need the support of those of us who maybe don't have the idea, but maybe we can help put it to the test. And just imagine people, just imagine if 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 this gets validated and really begins to uh, get recognized, or maybe that, that missing piece that says, this is how it all works, um, just plops itself open. Uh, imagine what a world we could be living in. Yeah, thank you. That's the whole point of my work. I want to prove it. That's why I give away 50 days of free sessions, if I may, Joe. Scalarlight.com is a website. Visit the website. You, anybody in your family can upload photographs. I want to prove this to the world. Scalarlight.com. Thank you for being open-minded, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Well, Tom, I think that uh, if you got a final parting shot beyond that, uh, scalarlight.com, I think, is really where all the information is. Um, but... You've got links on your uh, on your bio that's on our site, and uh, people can go and pop in, look at your YouTube channel, your Instagram, Facebook, all of that. Uh, and most importantly, they can send you a photograph and find out for themselves how this all works. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Tom Palladino, folks. And uh, until next time, this has been the Healthy Living Podcast brought to you by Willow Creek Springs.